Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the New York City Council Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. I'm Brad Lander, Chair of the Committee. We're joined this morning by members of the Committee, Councilmember Jumani Williams from Brooklyn, Councilmember Margaret Chin from Manhattan, Councilmember Debbie Rose from Staten Island, um, and other members will likely join us as well. Uh, thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the Committee Council, Elizabeth Guzman, and thank the staff members for the investigative unit who, as always, have prepared us well with lots of good background research uh, for the hearing. Chuck Davis, our Director of Investigations, as well as Andre Johnson-Brown, and our legislative intern, Joseph Anderson. Um, in a letter dated June 16, 2017, Mayor Bill de Blasio formally submitted the name of Thomas Sorrentino to the Council for our advice and consent regarding his recommendation uh, regarding the recommendation by the Brooklyn delegation for, of the City Council for appointment to the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Uh, if Mr. Sorrentino, who is a Brooklyn resident, receives the advice and consent of the Council and is subsequently appointed to the TLC, he will be eligible to complete the remainder of a seven-year term expiring on January 31st, 2022. Um, this is filling the seat which was made vacant when Frank Carone, who was the previous Brooklyn uh, rep on the TLC resigned. Um, I won't go into its whole TLC authorization, creation, responsibilities, um, history, and future, but it's a pretty interesting uh, set of uh, laws and rules and questions right now. Actually, they're doing a hearing this morning over at the TLC on whether to require app-based companies like Uber to offer a tipping option. Uh, it was just reported that they are considering some new accessibility rules that would require for hire vehicles and some percentage to offer accessibility, as yellow taxis already do. Some folks know that the state created a new autonomous vehicle testing program, so I suspect before too long the TLC will have to turn to the question of driverless for hire vehicles. So it is an important um, uh, policy setting body and also as Councilmember Williams and others have looked at things like commuter vans and issues that m make a big difference in our neighborhood. So an important role and we're grateful to the members who serve. Um, and I, um, I will note that other than the chair, who is a, which is a salaried position, the other members of the TLC uh, don't receive any compensation for their service, so we're grateful to those who do it without compensation. Um, and we are grateful to have Mr. Sorrentino here, whose nomination was put forward by the Brooklyn delegation and then submitted formally by the mayor uh, with us this morning. He'll make an opening statement and then we can ask some questions. I'll also call to members' attention that he submitted responses to written questions prepared by the council in advance, which are in your materials, as well as other background materials uh, on him. So, Mr. Sorrentino, we ask folks who appear before us to uh, swear or affirm that they're going to tell the truth. So if you'll raise your right hand, our council will swear or affirm you in. Good morning. Do you morning. swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you. You can now uh, proceed to give your opening statement. Okay, good morning. Uh, I would like to thank all the members of the committee for having me here today. It is my pleasure and honor to be with you regarding my potential appointment to the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. I am looking forward to serving on the commission and serving the city of New York, a city which I have called home my entire life. As a lifetime New Yorker, I believe that I bring a certain hometown understanding and perspective that will provide me with some helpful insights with regard to the views of the residents of our city as they pertain to the transportation issues and related matters that we all deal with on a daily matter on a daily basis, particularly those related to taxi cab and other four hire vehicle services, both here in Manhattan and the outer boroughs. By way of background, I am a lifelong resident of Brooklyn, New York, where I grew up and have also raised my family. I am a graduate of New York University, and I am a licensed certified public accountant in New York and New Jersey. I am a partner with the firm of PCAF O'Connor Davies, LLP, here in New York City, where I have, I have practiced for over 30 years. Over the years, I have been involved in a variety of professional, business, civic, and charitable organizations and associations, which has provided me with the pr privilege and honor to have met and served with a broad array of individuals and to work on a multitude of projects and events. More recently, I have served as a member of Community Board 18 in Brooklyn and on its Transportation Committee, and currently serve as a member on the Executive Committee on the Board of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. These experiences have allowed me to to hear the concerns and issues that are important to the everyday lives of individuals who live, work, and do business here in our city. One of the most constant and repeated points of interest for most, almost everyone that I come into contact with in these settings 
are transportation-related matters, where they relate to mass transit issues, car transportation issues, such as accessing a cab, or other for hire vehicles, traffic and infrastructure concerns, etc. These topics seem to impact every New Yorker in some fashion on both a personal and a business level. As such, I believe that I am somewhat in tune with an important set of issues that affect so many people. I would consider serving on the commission a privilege that would allow me to try and bring some measure of life and professional experience to work in collaboration with other dedicated individuals who serve on the commission, along with a dedicated and professional staff, to deal with the issues and matters that impact all the stakeholders within the purview of the regulatory oversight of the TLC. I realize that there are many issues and matters that need to be addressed and resolved as it pertains to this industry, and new policies to be formulated to meet the challenges of an ever-changing landscape and business environment, with the ultimate objective of providing service to the riding public that is safe, reliable, and accessible to everyone. We must also keep in mind that the drivers and owners who provide these services are equally and vitally as important to the success and ability to, provi to provide the public with the level of service that one would expect from our great city. I thank you again for this opportunity and can only say that if I am afforded the chance to serve on the commission, I will put forth the necessary effort and energy to be a productive member. I look forward to answering any questions you may have for me. Thank you very much. Um, I'll ask just a question or two and then turn it over to my colleagues if they have questions. Um, you alluded to some of this in your testimony, but uh, and to some of the answers you submitted to us in advance. But obviously, there's a, you know, just a whole series of hot button issues in this general field these days. The tipping question has the hearing this morning. We talked about accessibility issues. It's a rapidly evolving field as a result of technology. The, you know, the changes that were made around green taxi cab almost instantly felt, you know, outpaced by just the pace of change. Uh, you know, how do you, you know, how will, you know, how will you evaluate what policies are appropriate and necessary in such a fast-moving field to determine what's the right and fair balance for customers, for safety, for drivers, for the city? Well, you, you touched upon quite a bit of, of items, and I'm aware that this, this whole sector is a very fast-changing uh, sector uh, for the reasons that you've just mentioned. And I think one of the things I could try to bring to the Commission is in my ability to have uh, to listen to try to hear all sides, to hear different perspectives, and to really try to come up with a balance that serves both the general public as well as the drivers and owners. I think there's got to be some type of uh, relationship where everybody, it, it works for everyone, uh, with the primary aspect of trying to make uh, the, the, the transportation for the city residents and visitors safe, reliable, and accessible. Um. Okay, and I suspect my colleagues will drill down on some of those issues in their questions, and I, I can come back to some of them as well. Um, I just want to ask, I know that you uh, have some involvements in civic and political life uh, that, um, you know, while they aren't conflicts of the sort that they embed you in the TLC industry, uh, are prohibited by the various rules that govern. If you could just go over uh, what those uh, current involvements are and, and affirm your plans to uh, resign or step back from them in ways that would remove Certainly. those conflicts? Uh, uh, I am a member of my community board, which is Community Board 18 in Brooklyn. Uh, my uh, term, uh, I believe, concluded in June of this, of this past year. Uh, I will not be seeking uh, to be reappointed on that, so I will not be a member going forward into the new, into new year, which starts in September, so that should be fine. Uh, and if I need to, I will certainly resign from that. Uh, I am also act as a treasurer for a, a committee, a political committee, uh, for the Kings County Chairman, uh, which I will be uh, resigning from uh, sh very shortly. Uh, I have one filing to do for the July 2017 period, and once that's concluded, I will be resigning from that position. Uh, I am also the treasurer on a dormant uh, committee for a former state assemblyman uh, that I will be uh, we're working to close that, that committee out and the, uh, the account out on that. My intention is to resign from that as soon as we get conclude that process, which hopefully will be very shortly. And just to clarify on this final one, because we had a little chance to talk in advance, um, on that third issue, that's a, a long com a dormant committee from a prior election, uh, and that you would be open to resigning or stepping back from it, but the state wants it to get closed and resolved, and obviously since you were the treasurer, wants to conclude it with you. Um, as I understand at least the intention of the prohibition or the conflict, it's to make sure that 
uh, appointees with significant policy discretion like the TLC commissioners have don't engage in fundraising. Uh, and so since that committee is dormant for a past election, it is not engaging in any fundraising. Is that correct? That is correct. That is a dormant committee. Uh, the person who I'm on the, um, the treasurer for has not been in office for several years now. Uh, there is no fundraising activities or any of the, of, the, of the like, and there's no intention to do anything going forward with that except close it out. So you would not be engaging in any political fundraising while you're in correct. this position as required by the Charter. Um, and I'll just let members know we're asking for some legal guidance and clarity um, just to clarify, assuming that is a, a prohibition on fundraising, we're, we're totally in the clear. If there is a more technical issue that needs to be explored, we'll, we'll figure it out and get that addressed with, uh, with Mr. Sorrentino. Let me uh, welcome, we've also been joined by a member of the committee from Manhattan, Council Member Mark Levine, and though not a member of the committee, the co-chair of the Brooklyn delegation, whose nominee this is, uh, Council Member Mark Traeger. Good morning and welcome to both of you. Um, all right, let me turn it over to colleagues if they have questions or statements now, and I may come back with a couple of okay. uh, questions at the end. Um, Councilmember Williams. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir, uh, for being here. I see you uh, served on Community Board 18, so did I. I don't know if it was at the same time, but it's a pretty good uh, community board. And you have a good resume, so thank you. I did want to just get an idea what made you interested particularly in TLC. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What made you interested particularly in TLC and in transportation? Well, as I mentioned in my opening statement, I, I lived in Brooklyn my entire life. Uh, I'm a lifelong New Yorker, and I access transportation, you know, either mass transit, I, I still take the subways these days, uh, and I do use uh, the medallion services in, in Manhattan. I also use the green cabs in, in Brooklyn, which I think was a great addition when that first came out because one of the things I experienced being a Brooklynite is that, you know, th that was always underserved from a taxi point of view. And having the green cabs, uh, the green hail service available was a, a great addition. So to me, you know, I think being a New Yorker, understanding the, 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 uh, the, the transportation needs, uh, of, of the boroughs, the outer boroughs especially, I think would be something that I could uh, add a perspective to, and hopefully I can. Um, when I was on Community Board 18, I was usually uh, against the grain, surprise uh, to not many folks, uh, but this one was uh, on uh, dollar vans, also called commuter vans, and we've come a long way in trying to make sure that they are uh, more mainstreamed. Thankfully, this TLC in particular and its administration, we found ways uh, to make sure that the public knows or who's licensed, who's insured. There's still some issues that we have to work through. Uh, the former rep from Brooklyn, we didn't always see eye to eye on it. Thankfully, he didn't do uh, much to block it, um, but I don't know if he was particularly in, the, in, in the pushing it. So I wanted to know what your uh, position is uh, on the community van industry and how we can make them more mainstream and uh, bring them more into the fold of transportation in the city. Well, I think commuter vans are an important aspect of transportation, especially in the outer boroughs. And in and, and, and living in Brooklyn, uh, I do know that it's, an, it's a vital uh, way for people to get around. And I think the, the most important thing is to ensure that the vans that are out there are licensed, they're legal, and they're safe. Uh, I understand that there's vans that operate that are not licensed, and, and, and I think that's a, a safety concern to the public. So to me, I think the resources of the city and the TLC should be devoted to trying to get that van service, if you will, uh, properly, you know, working uh, where, where it could serve the community. I think it's an important aspect of, of transportation in, in, in Brooklyn especially. Uh, well, I appreciate that, particularly coming from Community Board 18, and it's, it's, it's I don't know, maybe it's, maybe they've changed their tune now, I haven't been there in discussing this issue in a while, but, um, and I don't know when you serve, but it's just glad to hear that you have that point of view. Uh, I guess uh, times are changing and people are, are really beginning to see the benefit of it. I mean, the city has seen it for a while. Every time there's a crisis, they go straight to the community vans. And after the community vans, after the crisis, they kind of regulate them back to where they were. Uh, but hopefully can, we can work together to continue to make sure that the licensed um, and the insured, and this body actually has done a lot to uh, pass a legislation to make sure that they, they're moving properly. Uh, we too want to step up enforcement on those that aren't insured and do not have licenses, and I'd love to do whatever we can uh, to try to get uh, some of those rogue ones uh, off the road, because uh, I know everyone wants to make money, but if something happens there, uh, the, dry, the passengers are not protected at all. Uh, my last question just has to do with uh, the L train. There has been some um, some of the industry people in the commuter vans trying to see if they can provide their service there. There's a, a bit of a kerfuffle 
for lack of a better word now, on what's going to happen there, I guess, until folks are figuring out some other things. But in the meantime, uh, more established or, um, companies, Ubers and Lyft, although they're trying to say they don't want anything in that lane, I guess, until they figure out what's going to happen, the more established companies, uh, I should say the bigger and richer companies, are already making headway. And some of the smaller guys and the immigrant folks are not being able to, particularly the commuter vans, who want to work with whatever guidelines are being set. Uh, do you know much about it? Do you have an opinion on how we can make sure that everybody has access uh, to that area if we're going to provide alternative? Well, the, well, the one thing I can say, I, I do actually take the L train myself. <laughs> so I am, a, I am an average rider of the L train. I actually started from the Canarsie uh, point, the first stop. Uh, so I'll be personally facing that issue myself in the next year or so once they, they do break down the, uh, the, uh, the stops for the, for the work they're going to do. So I, I realize that's going to be a major need for a lot of people uh, who take that train line. Uh, so there's going to be some alternative transportation methods that could serve everybody because I understand the L train is one of the, if not the most uh, traveled line in the city. It's going to cause a lot of havoc for a lot of people. Uh, and also for the businesses and the residents uh, in, along those lines. So to me, I think that's, that's an area that needs to be uh, looked at very closely from, from all parts of the city, from mass transit as well as the TLC. So I think, you know, I would be open to anything that would work and, and be manageable for everybody. So some, some of the sentiment is that um, they, uh, they want to provide, um, I guess, less cars, I guess, as, a, as an alternative. They're trying to find some, some other ways, um, which I think is, is, is fine. My only thing is that if we're, if we're going to provide uh, alternatives that uh, uses gas, I guess, for lack of a better word, I just want to make sure that all industries have access to it, including the commuter van. So is that something that you would think makes sense or would agree to? Yeah, yes, I would be open to anything, you know, that would, that would be manageable and, and, and taking those considerations into, in, into play as well. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, to welcome Councilmember Gorodnik. Uh, are there other members with specific uh, questions for Mr. Sorrentino? Councilmember Chin. Yeah. I, thank you. And uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sorrentino, for willing to serve. Um, I was just looking at some of your questions. Um, because the industry is changing, uh, I know that the uh, TLC, uh, following on what my colleague, Councilmember William, has said, TLC has been very supportive uh, of the commuter, commuter van industry and has worked, you know, in my district with me and, and also with Councilmember Cool because we have a commuter van that goes back and forth between Chinatown and, and Brooklyn and Flushing, and we work really hard on finding uh, legal, you know, stops for them uh, so that people know where to find them. And so we just want to make sure that TLC continue to really work with this industry and help them improve. Uh, because I think I remember from the commissioner at some of the hearing, they actually need more drivers. Uh, and that is something that uh, I think we do need to support because it's affordable comparatively to, um, you know, car service and things like that. My question is related to the traditional industry of the yellow cab and the expansion of the, the green cab in the other borough. Because um, now there are all these competitions from these you know, Ubers and all these groups. We have to make sure that somehow we don't lose the cab industry. Because we did so much to try to expand it to the other boroughs. And as, as you mentioned in your answers, they're not, even the green cab, they're not everywhere, right? And even yellow caps, um, it's only in certain area, more or less. Uh, but we have to still find a way to make sure that they can survive because they're the one that's working with us to make uh, their caps accessible versus the, the, app, you know, the app industry, they're not. And I know that the TLC commissioner has made some um, demand and sort of some uh, percentage of accessibility you know, going forward. But what, what is your opinion in terms of really finding a way uh, to make sure that we don't lose the cab industry, the yellow and the, and, and the green? Well, I, I would agree with you that, you know, from my perspective as a, as a New Yorker, uh, yellow cabs have been, you know, a staple of the city. And, it, you know, it's just it's something that you would never want to lose. Uh, so, in, you know, in my judgment, in my opinion, if I was to serve on the commission, I would do everything that would be possible to have an open mind to, to do everything to regulate the yellows, 
in, in, in a fashion that would be uh, fair to them, fair to the owners, fair to the drivers, and allow them to flourish as well. Uh, I know there's been a lot of uh, challenges lately into the whole industry for a host of reasons, but I, I would be a proponent for trying to make uh, the yellow cabs you know, viable, as well as the green cabs, which I had mentioned in my responses, I thought was a great addition to the outer boroughs, and I, I just personally wish they were more uh, accessible throughout the boroughs, uh, because you know, in certain locations, the high, uh, the high uh, business areas, the, the events areas, you see them, but in the outer parts of the borough, you don't, and uh, that's when you really need them. <laughs> so, but I would be open to that, certainly. I, I look forward to working with you on that. Thank you. Thank you. You're Chief. welcome. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. We had some guests in the gallery, and now they're heading out. We'll say farewell to them. We're not entirely sure who they were, but uh, all right, Councilmember Williams. Then I just really quickly, sorry, I just wanted to uh, shout out um, Councilmember Danik Miller for all the work that he did uh, with me as well on the uh, Delavan issue. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Traeger. Thank you, uh, Chair Lander, for for your leadership, um, and I just want to just. Uh, just make a, a brief uh, statement of, of support uh, and uh, to say how, you know, that Mr. Sorrentino earned the overwhelming majority uh, of the Brooklyn delegation, the largest delegation in, in the city council. Um, and I also want to just note that uh, you, your, your resume uh, is very strong, your professional uh, credentials very strong, but the thing that I, I really appreciate is your connections to, to, to the community, your civic credentials. I think sometimes folks in government, whether you're on TLC or any type of board or group, sometimes people get lost in a bubble. But you've never lost your roots to the community, being a member of Community Board 18, being a part of so many different organizations, uh, pr in providing you know pro bono, just volunteering your time. And I think that that's important because that's where you hear real concerns, real issues come up. Um, and so I, I just want to really credit you on that. I also just want to note that in th you, know, you are replacing someone, uh, the previous member from, from Brooklyn, uh, Frank Carone, who really spearheaded the issue of accessibility for all. And that's something that I just think we need to continue to encourage, making sure that our transportation services are really complying with all laws, but really just ch continuing to champion the issue of making sure that we are accessible for all people. Uh, that is something that uh, I know Mr. Carone took very serious, we take very serious, and we hope that you will continue, and your answers have been spot on on that issue, and we appreciate you, and uh, wish you continued success, and, and congratulations. I thank you for that, and, and just to, to your point about accessibility, I, I do feel strongly about that as well. I believe it's very important that we continue on that path. So uh, I will, will do my best to, to, to continue that. Thank you, thanks so much. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Traeger. I, I will just add one, one comment here. This kind of builds off my first question, but I think it goes to some of these as well. This is just more like a, my hope for your service, and I'll extend what Councilmember Traeger said. Obviously, this is a position without uh, a lot of glamor or glory or any uh, compensation, so we appreciate you doing it. Um, and I very much appreciate the uh, style of kind of listening and stakeholder balancing that you have done in your career and commit to do here. Um, I do think, I'm, in, I'm encouraged by the way the TLC has been stepping up a little more aggressively on some of these issues, uh, like accessibility, like tipping, like, and, and I'm eager to see that continue, even as we look to balance all the stakeholders, you know, I do have concerns with the way that some of these big new entrants, I mean, Uber especially, but, um, you know, that's a, a big corporation with a lot of reasons to be concerned that their interests don't match the public interests in New York City, whether that's thought of as the riders, people with disabilities, their drivers, our neighborhoods, uh, much less, obviously, the incumbent actors in the system. Uh, who, as Councilmember Chin said, you know, in the case of the yellows, are important for achieving service. So um, while I appreciate your tenor of sort of balance, I would just urge uh, uh, ambitious and aggressive action in pursuit of the public interest. And we're at a mo it's not always easy to ascertain what's the public interest because existing drivers in all the different systems are New Yorkers and we care about them and want them to have a decent living, people who rely on all kinds of these different systems, neighbors who are dealing with some of the challenges of the commuter vans. They're, you know, it's a diverse public interest, but really ambitiously advocating for those public interests and being willing to 
regulate private actors, especially the big corporate ones who might not share those goals, that's important for all of us. So that's just sort of a personal soapbox, but uh, in as much as we'll very likely be recommending and, and nominating you to the TLC, I, I hope that's uh, the disposition that you'll bring. Yes, I, I, I certainly will keep my mind open and try to consider all, all the aspects and all the stakeholders uh, with the public interest in mind, especially, certainly. Thank you. Um, unless any other members have questions, we'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing. We don't, um, as, I, as we explained in advance, uh, vote at the first uh, time in this committee. We recess the hearing, and it'll be uh, pulled out of recess on the day of next week's council stated meeting. That'll give us some time to follow up on this one issue that we talked about, talked about around that dormant state level committee and just confirm that because you're not doing any fundraising for it, there's no issue there, be able to recommend and vote uh, this out of committee uh, next week at the state of meeting and bring it to the floor of the full council and then send it over to the mayor for appointment. So. Okay, thank you very much. With that, we close this public hearing and we put the committee of uh, the rules committee into recess. Thank you. Thank you.